My name is Brian McTeer. I was the producer for this episode of Shaking Through featuring Kaitan. With Kaitana, we wanted to hear a power trio firing on all cylinders. The tendency or the convention today is for people to think about the music they're recording in the pure abstract, not always to recognize that core ensemble as having the strengths that it actually has. We get you guys set up and playing the song, getting you comfortable, getting everybody comfortable with headphones and stuff. Once we run through it live a couple times, we'll just be recording it. And then from there is where we make the sort of like plan of attack, like how to go about actually doing it. So the day started just uh, all the band just setting up in the room, um, just kind of running through the song because there was still even like a little bit of uncertainty about, you know, specific parts or maybe like transitions between parts. Here's the thing, right? Songs that have a slow wind up that are kind of like start one way and they kind of go on this steady path up. The biggest problem right now is that the rhythm of it is really, really nebulous at the beginning. Yeah. And then it finally kicks in, right? Mm -hmm. We need to make it be pun rhythmically punchy and on mm -hmm. right from the get-go. They knew that they wanted this song to start quiet and end loud. That ends up leading to a weak rhythm track. By clearly defining what the steps are and when exactly they take place, everybody's on the same page. The pressure was really on Kelly. Uh, I would have cracked under that pressure. I know I would have, and she didn't. Like the very first hit in these, does that sound <laughs> off to you guys? Say, say that again. Like, like right at the very beginning. When you when you go from high half like, to the top, and then is yeah. that awkward? Um, I thought you'd nailed it that last time. Okay. Okay. It's good. You're it's worried good. about where you're gonna throw in those little flourishes. Yeah, or it's like a, it just happens, and then I'm like, okay, that happened, so I'm gonna it's keep okay, going. It's okay. Yeah. It was a great surprise when Mark Quinlan from Hop Along walked in. He's a friend of the band, and they know he's a great drummer. So he became a really big part of the process, and, and I really, really appreciate that. Yeah, I totally get that. Right. With Kelly, all her drum parts were just like this jumble in her head. So like having Marky here to help Kelly with the drums and just kind of like going through drum parts with her, I think that like helped really move the song along and get to be like the finished product. Yeah. And when you add those cymbals, like right before you go in with the ride part, yeah. you put down. That's, so, that's awesome. Like, that's okay. a great like little evolution on the, from that beat. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. Okay. It took five hours, I think, four or five hours to get that basic track. And again, the pressure was all on her. Um, and she really, really, really rose to the occasion. And she really pulled it off in the end. Should we do it again? <laughs> yeah. Great though. Everybody I'm... went, yeah. 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 yeah everybody liked awesome. it. Cool, man. All right, cool. Yeah, let's, let's do it again. Are you guys all set? So let me go, go, let me go, go, let me go, oh, So we ended up tracking four guitars on this song. We used the Telecaster, we used the Rickenbacker, and we used the SG. Sounds awesome. Sounds really cool. Yeah, keep going if you could. The first layer that we did was Augusta just playing through the whole song and strumming. That went into the Working Dog. We mic'd that with the AEA R84, and that was going into the Fredenstein preamp. The second layer we ended up doing was Augusta just ringing out chords on the chord changes. When you're playing with high gain guitars, there's always the chance that you're gonna gain past the actual guitar's impact, the strum impact. It's just gonna turn into fuzz and mush. So that's why we did that. We just wanted her to gliss through the chord changes so that the core guitar part has impact chord to chord to chord. Let's just do a double of what you just did with the space echo. Okay. What so, do you uh, think about, um, Brian, sorry, trying like on top of like just two harmonizing notes like That sounds really cool. That sounds really cool to me. Yeah.
as the song went along, we ended up adding more like textural based guitar parts through the space echo and the memory man. Which I don't is know cool. if it'll, we'll see if it Oh, it's totally gonna work. Yeah? Yeah, totally. All right, cool. That guitar part in particular with the space echo is all about lifting the moment from point A to point B. It's not so much a hook, it's more of a device to help you take that step to the next level. For Augusta's vocal, we used the whole Fredenstein chain, which is preamp going into the EQ and then into the compressor. Sounds awesome. Can you sing along one more time? We're just almost there with this with these sounds. Yeah. Here we go. We set up the, the Neumann U67 very close, maybe like a couple inches away. And then we'll set the AA440 back a little bit further. Some the fact that we put the 440 at arm's length isn't because it's secondary to the U67, it's actually because it's an incredibly unwieldy instrument. Minor fluctuations in distance because of the proximity effect of that old ribbon microphone can sound like miles of distance. So we can track both of them in their pure, perfect sort of element and then decide which one we really want to use later. Awesome. Sounds great. Sounds cool. great, Gus. Let's do one more. For her lead vocal, we went with the AA440, just because she's good at like projecting, and that 440 captured the character of her voice really well. If you want to hear the difference between those two microphones, you can actually go to the raw tracks from the session. You can do an a your own A-B comparison between the U67 and the 440 from the exact same takes and it's incredibly illuminating. Awesome, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> the room gets real quiet when you take those off. <laughs> What's up, guys? Oh, hey, that was awesome. This session, while it was filled with a lot of challenges, was such a pleasure because of all the great triumphs that we got to experience ourselves and got to share with all these people. You know, it was really a, a big success. Kaitana ends up becoming a better band right before our eyes. Right before everybody's eyes. That's awesome. <laughs> we'll, work, we'll perfect <laughs> this. You know, the little... In time. The, the windmill high five. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I gotcha. Shaking Through is produced by Weathervane Music, a nonprofit dedicated to supporting independent music and the community that surrounds it. Your support helps sustain this series, which creates bold new art and resources to inspire the independent music community. To get involved, go to weathervanemusic.org.